All rise. Veuillez vous lever. The International Criminal Court is now in session. L'audience de la Cour pénale internationale est ouverte. Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. Thank you very much. Uh, court of officer, please announce the case. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Situation in the Republic of Kenya. In the case of the prosecutor, this is William Samuel Ruto and Joshua Arab Sang. Case number ICC 01090111. And we are in public session. Thank you very much. Uh, appearances remain the same, I take it? Your Honours, no. For the prosecution, we have a new team this morning. Uh, the prosecution is represented by myself, Anton Steinberg, Lara Renton, Regina Weiss, and our case manager, Grace Go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, the, uh, Mr. William Ruto is today represented by David Kupa, QC, Lee Lori, Salini Jairaj, Grace Sullivan, and uh, our two pro bono legal assistants, uh, Brooke Stedman, Manuel Ventura. My name is SFA. Mr. Khan and Shamla Alegandra are absent today. So it's your client. Indeed, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Cantwell? Mr. Pres Mr. President, Mr. Sang is present and is represented by myself, Katwa Kigen, uh, Mr. Philemon Koech, Logan Hambrick, and uh, our case manager, Hona Lanham. Thank you. Mr. Nerzat Sang? Mr. Nerzat Sang? Mr. for victims, Yana. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, before we uh, proceed, uh, we must keep our promise to you. You had, um, we had run out of tape um, last evening, so we couldn't take your submissions. Um, we thought we will do that first thing. Um, we are in open session. Is this some submission you can make in, op in open session? On the scheduling, I imagine you can. But you know, just to be careful, uh, can I ask for a price session? All right, then, uh, hold on a minute. Before we do that, um, Prosecutor, um, yesterday when we were discussing the matter of who to fit in within. Uh, the period we had in mind um, before the winter recess. A suggestion um, was made by the Ruto defense that you consider uh, moving up witness 32 and you say do you have uh, concerns about doing that which concerns you did not want to discuss in the presence of opposing counsel. Um, can you put that in writing and send it up to us today, to the Chamber? Yeah, an email will do about the reasons why you feel very reluctant about calling Witness 32, moving Witness 32 up. Um, we would appreciate receiving the things you wanted to say that you did not want to say in the presence of opposing counsel. Put that in an email and send to us. Certainly, Your Honour. Um, it's not that it's a matter of, of, of huge secrecy. It's simply a matter of uh, tactics, uh, trial tactics, which, which uh, it, it would not be suitable for me to discuss inter parties. That's what I said. Uh, I, it doesn't matter just why. Just if you can give us those reasons in, in an email that's ex parte. Your Honour, perhaps while I'm on my feet, I could just make one correction to the spelling of my colleague's name. It's uh, lest her reputation be unnecessary sullied. It is not Regina Weiss, V-I-C-E. It is W-E-I-S-S. -S. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Katwa? Mr. President, I had you observe that uh, it is the wish of the Ruta team that witness number 32 be brought up. 
it, we share the same, Mr. President, and we would pray that uh, uh, that position be understood, that we would also wish that that witness number 32 be brought up. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Ketwa. All right, so that's with that old th matter. Now, we will take submissions on the witness protection for uh, witness 423 as the next witness. But in the meantime, um, if we can quickly go into private session for Mr. Narachatsang to make his submission. Nous sommes en audience publique. Mr. President, we're in public session. Um, we will now take submissions on the protection measures in the courtroom for witness 423. Uh, prosecutor, do you need to supplement orally or update orally your written material on this? Thank you, Your Honours. My learned friend, uh, Ms. Renton, will be leading this witness and she will make these submissions. Good morning, Mr. President. Your Good morning. You had my question. I did, yes. We have no further submissions um, in, other than those that we put in our written filing, 1044. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now take oral submissions from the defence and the Victims' Council. Is this something we can safely do in the public session, um, Mr. Farrell? Uh, yes, Mr. President. We, we can? We can, yes. All right, then uh, proceed, please. We do not oppose the application that was made by the prosecution. Uh, we do believe that um, measures similar to the ones that have been put in place for the previous witness would be adequate. Uh, however, Mr. President, we would wish that much of the testimony of the witness be done in public. Uh, I have here with me uh, the PIS that was provided by the prosecution. We noticed that some of the locations that the witness would testify about are included in the PIS. Uh, in my mind, it seems to be that uh, the information that would go out in the public would not include the location about which this witness would be testifying. And we do think that uh, that is maybe taking it a little too far. It is important that the, when the public hears the testimony, they also are aware of the area it relates to, because otherwise the testimony would not have much meaning to the people who are listening to it outside. Uh, we agree with the measures requested, but we crave the indulgence of the court to put in place mechanisms that would allow for the public to be able to place the exact location uh, that is being testified about by the witness. Those are my submissions on this issue, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, just so I understand you clearly, are you saying that the locations indicated in the PIS uh, uh, should not be protected information? Indeed, Mr. President because uh, these locations do not disclose the identity of the witness. Thank you. Mr. Katwa? Mr. President, on our part, we will not oppose the protective measure sought for, for two reasons. The first one is that uh, the witness does not touch much on, our, on, on my client. That's the first one. Uh, the second issue that I would want to take is that uh, our concession as to the protective measures sought by the prosecution in respect, is in respect to this witness only and should not be deemed that we concede that the protective measures should, should apply to any future witnesses. Thank you, Mr. President. All rise. Veuillez vous lever.
Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. Thank you very much. The, uh, um, the chamber has deliberated on the submissions of counsel on the matter of protection for the witness while in the courtroom. Uh, the chamber grants the request of the uh, prosecution for protection measures, uh, considering the uh, consent of <coughs> the other um, counsel to the measures. In other words, the measures will be in the usual menu, that is voice and face distortion and limited use of private uh, sessions. Um, the Chamber has also considered the matter of the uh, Mr. Fowle's uh, concerns on the uh, PIS containing the locations as it currently does and the Chamber rules that uh, the locations indicated in the PIS should remain as such in the PIS. Of course, in the context of questions asked, we will see whether there is a need for certain specific questions to mask the locations as we go along. So that would be the Chamber's ruling. So the PIS remains as it is. Private session briefly, please. We are in public session, Mr. President. Thank you very much. A witness, welcome to the court. Um, the Court officer will now administer the solemn declaration to you. I understand that the victims and witnesses unit have already familiarized you with the text of the declaration. Is that the case? Is there interpretation? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, all right. Thank you very much. Um, I will be giving you certain advice in a minute. But before I do that, um, I will have the court officer um, take you through the solemn declaration for the record of the court. And please, sir, um, you will need to always be closer to the microphone so that you can be heard clearly. Thank you. Court officer, please. Monsieur le témoin. Mr. Witness, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Dear. The witness? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. And as I said earlier to you, um, welcome to you. Uh, welcome to the courtroom. And when I say welcome, um, I don't want you to feel like a stranger to the courtroom. Uh, this courtroom belongs to you as well. So we want you to feel very comfortable in it, sitting where you are. The, yeah. the court officer has um, taken you through your oath or your declaration, and you have declared 
to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That is all that we require of you. Yeah. That's all we want from you while you are sitting there. Just concentrate on doing nothing but simply the truth and nothing but the truth. Um, in order to assist us, and in order for you to do that, it is very important that you listen carefully to the questions that the lawyers would ask you. The, that is how the court works. It's by lawyers asking you questions and you giving answers to those questions that you help us know what happened. So when they ask you those questions, please listen very carefully to what they're asking you. Understand it first before beginning to answer. It's important that you understand the questions that are being asked of you. If you do not understand the questions, do not hesitate to let the lawyer who is asking you the question know. Court officer, can you please? Know that you do not understand the question. So if you don't understand the question, let them know you do not. They will repeat it. In answering the question, please try not to guess at an answer. Only answer what you know. Only answer what you saw. Only answer what you heard what you felt. So as a witness, we want you to give us information that you yourself perceived firsthand. That is the most important information for us. So try to limit yourself to that sort of information. But if the answer, or the question rather, if the question requires that you feel that you must guess at an answer, uh, let us know that. So we are warned. So we are able to make a difference between what you yourself know or what you are guessing at. But it's more important that you tell us what you know. Now, there's also the process that we follow in the court that helps us to record what you are saying so that your testimony remains on the record of the court for us to consult later. Um, the court is assisted by interpreters who are sitting up there and also court reporters who are sitting up there. The interpreters will translate or interpret what I'm saying or what the lawyers are saying in English into Kiswahili so you can understand what we're saying. And they will also interpret your answer in Kiswahili back into English so we can understand. For that to happen, it requires that you speak at a moderate pace, not very fast, not too slow, but just in the middle somewhere there so the discussion can flow, but at a pace that they can follow in their work. So speak slowly, but not too slowly. Also, observe what we call a gap. The gap is the space that you must observe between the question that you have been asked and you beginning to answer the question. That also makes it easier for the court reporters and interpreters to do their work properly. But I will remind you on that as we go along. Do you understand all that I've said? Yeah. Thank you very much. The witness? Yes. Thank you. So the lawyers will now begin asking you questions. The first will be the lawyer for the prosecutor who is sitting over there. She will begin asking you questions first. When she's done asking you her questions, then the lawyers for 
the defence, first Mr. Ruto's lawyer would ask you questions, or Mr. Sang's lawyer would also ask you questions, depending on how they agree on themselves, who will ask you questions first. But first the prosecutor finishes, and then the defence lawyers will take over in asking you questions. Do you understand? Leo. All right. Uh, what Witness, yes. What's important is that you relax. You are in a public space that belongs to you as well. Relax and answer your questions as they come to you. Thank you very much, Ms. Renton. Good morning, Mr. Witness. My name is Lara Renton. We've met before. And as His Honour explained, I'll be asking you some questions on behalf of the prosecution. Your Honours, may I ask that we go into a uh, private session, please? So we will go into private session. And just to again witness to explain to you what is happening, uh, before you came in, the prosecutor had asked that um, we do not reveal your identity to the public. And for that reason, um, certain sections of your testimony will be conducted in what we call private session. Uh, that means members of the public will not hear that part of your testimony. Um, but when we're in public session, at that time, uh, they can hear your voice, but they will not see your face. But the voice they will hear will not be directly your own voice. It will be your own voice, but it will be distorted in a way that people in the public will not know it is your voice. That is the exercise, what we call voice distortion. So that measure has been granted to you in order to protect who you are, your identity. When we are also in public, and when we're in public, you will see that button. You see, there's a button in front of you. Uh, there's a, a little thing in, in front there. Uh, no, beyond the microphone, do you see a red light? Can you please point out that to him, court officer? All right, that red light that the court officer is pointing out to you, it's red. You see the other one is green, but it's not lit up now. When we are in public session, as we are now, the button will light up red. But when we go into private session, it will light up green. In the green mode, it means you can relax and speak anything at all, including your name and names of people around you, even information that identify who you are, because we're in private session. It will not be broadcast to the public. But when we're in open session and the right is, uh, light is red, uh, it means you have to be careful about giving answers, because we do not want you then to give answers that reveal who you are, such as answers that involve your name, or your specific address, or names of your family members or close friends. But we do not want you to give that sort of evidence in the public session. Also, there may be something that happened, which only you and a few other people were around to observe it happen. Maybe you and two or three other people were around to observe that event, we do not want you to describe that sort of event in the public session because those who are with you at the time may know that only the three or two of you knew this, so it's probably you that is testifying about it. So that sort of information we don't want you to give when we are in the public session. We will receive such information, including names of people and yours, when we are in the private session. So all these measures have been taken to make you feel comfortable 
in the testimony you would give that the court has done what the court feels is right to do to protect your identity. So we will now go into private session for Ms. Renton to start her questions of you. Mr. President, we are in public session. Thank you. A witness, we are now in public session, and you see that light is back to red. So, um, in the public session, the members of the public will hear a, a voice that belongs to you, but that voice has been distorted in a way that people will not uh, recognize it's your voice. In this public session, remember what I had advised you earlier, it's important that you do not give out um, identifying information in your answers. In particular, um, I want your answers to be brief. You listen to the question the lawyer is asking you and answer it as briefly as you can. Um, if the answer is one you can do by saying yes or no, then you can say that, say yes. Or if it's no that's appropriate, then say no. If the lawyer has another question to ask to follow up to that answer you gave, that brief answer you gave, then she would ask you the further question, which you again would answer briefly. The reason why this is important is because she knows we are in public session, and she would ask you questions which she thinks would not reveal your identity, because she probably has an idea of the answer you may give. But if you now start giving longer answers that she did not anticipate, then you may, in the longer answer, reveal some identifying information. So it's important for you to let her control the questions and answers. There is something that happens when people who are not familiar with the court come to court. When you are sitting there, and she asks a question, and you give a certain answer, and she doesn't ask you another question immediately, you may think that she is waiting for you to say more. No, that's not what is happening. She is keeping quiet because interpreters are interpreting in the meantime, so that creates a certain gap that if you're not careful, you think maybe you've not answered enough, and then you keep going. No. Uh, she's keeping quiet because she's waiting for interpretation to finish. Keep this in mind. Uh, now, proceed, Ms. Frampton. Witness, is it correct that the main party opposing the PNU in the 2007 elections was the ODM. Dear. The witness, yes. And is it correct that Ryla Odinga was the leader of the ODM? Yeah. So, yes. I'm so one minute. Um, those two questions you've asked now, um, we, I'm not sure that those are an issue. They are not, Mr. President. Uh, the point being, let's limit this witness's testimony to only what it is necessary for him to testify to that are in contention. 
uh, they need not be in contention, but what is necessary that um, uh, is beyond what um, people can reasonably agree to without debate. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honours. Witness, you've told us that in Kenya, a person tends to vote for someone of their own ethnic group. Can you tell us who voted for the ODM in the 2007 elections? Which ethnic groups? Ndio. Witness, yes. And which groups were those? ODM. Mali kwa nikika, upando wa. Upani kwa nikika. Zaidi. The witness. In the location where I was residing, most inhabitants of that area are Nandi. Am I correct that Nandi is a subgroup of the Kalenjin ethnic group? Yes, yes. Your Honour, I note the time. Perhaps we may take a break now. We will then take a break. Uh, the witness, we will now take a break for a short period for 30 minutes to enable you get a break and also the court as well. So we will bring down the blinds and let out the witness.